Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. So Atari just announced a new console called the Atari 2600 Plus. Personally, I'm actually very interested in it and I plan on getting it. So what I had in mind was, uh, well, I have these Atari plug-in consoles. The paddle one that I have, this one right here, uh, this I actually do prefer uh, over anything else when it comes to my favorite arcade game, which is Warlords, which I've mentioned in the past, but for those that don't know, uh, yeah, Warlords is my favorite arcade game, and this is the best way to play that game, is with this specific plug-and-play uh, Atari Paddle Controller console. You'll see what I mean when I get to it, uh, but first... Let's check out this one. This is just a regular uh, joystick controller uh, packaged with probably like 8 to 10 games. I don't remember exactly what the number is. But uh, yeah, let's check it out. See if it's any good. And uh, yeah, press the on switch there. You can see the light. All right, so this is made by Jax Pacific, apparently. Um, I... I'm kind of familiar with Jax. I think they're, they're just mostly known for plug-and-play consoles. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five. It looks like ten games here, uh, which is decent, I guess, for this. Right away, I can tell you the controller, the joystick, is pretty good. Um, it's stiff. It's actually, like, really stiff. Like, you can barely see it move. I mean, you can, I guess, if I move it kind of hard but the good thing about it is uh even though it's kind of stiff it doesn't take much to move it um so yeah it functions pretty well let's just check out a couple games here and see how this controller is i mean it looks like a typical atari 2600 controller i think it's about the same size as an original controller but a little thicker maybe because i mean it's battery powered, so they had to make it a little thicker to stick the double A's in there. And this one took four double A batteries. So does the paddle, actually. It's the same. So, yeah. Uh, let's do asteroids here. Press fire to start. And, uh, yeah, let's see if this is any fun. Now we're in action here. We're in business. Okay, so this is kind of tough, actually, with this controller. I suck at this, apparently. So you can kind of just stay in one spot as long as none of the asteroids are going this way, because unlike the arcade, you know, the parts don't... Parts of the asteroid don't break off and go in separate directions. They just kind of... They just stay in one line, basically. Uh, let's do good old Yars Revenge, because this is an amazing game. One of the best Atari 2600 games. Uh, so for those that haven't really played much of this i highly recommend it if you haven't um i just died i forgot that the this color field it's it's supposed to be like a safe zone but when he attacks you the actual alien or whatever that's it that still doesn't save you so you have to watch out for that it only protects you from this little line following you around so basically what you have to do is trigger this block and then you fire it and try to hit the alien with it it's actually tricky this is a tough game whoa I almost died right there while so you have to do that while also trying to avoid this little line following you around and the only way to be completely safe from it is in is in this like force field area see he can't get you here but if I were to step outside of this and he touches me I'd be dead so Let's try and trigger that block again. I don't know exactly what triggers it. Sometimes I just I, I just try to get as close to the blocks as possible, and it usually triggers it. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite Ar uh, Atari games. I think it's most people's, probably. You know, it's obviously a really popular game, but... Yeah, that I think that's one thing that really separates this from a other Atari games, is the fact that... It's not really a high score system that you're going for, like most Atari games. Uh, this actually feels like levels. I'll try like one more game and then I'll show you the other one, the other controller. So let's do 
I mean, because let's do centipede. And by the way, I do love centipede. Centipede is another one of my favorites. Uh, specifically the arcade, though, not really the Atari version. I guess I would say when it comes to Atari, I would rather play games that were uh, exclusive to the uh, 2600 console as opposed to uh, arcade ports. Because nine times out of ten, you're, you're gonna rather play the arcade instead, the arcade port. So let's go ahead and try the other one now. So I just have to change the input on the thing. So, all right, so here is the ultimate paddle controller that I love. Uh, turn it on. And the reason why I love this one, it's got two joysticks, so you can play with a second player, or two paddles, I should say. And it's got a list of games here, more than the last one, uh, of 2,600 games, but a little bonus, it came with two arcade games, Pong, which is whatever. I mean, not that much different from the Atari version. Uh, and then Warlords. Yes, my favorite arcade game. Now, let me tell you why this is so great with this plug-and-play console. So, I prefer playing Warlords with a paddle. I think it's it, it's just better. You know, you move around better with a paddle. And the arcade or the Atari 2600 version of Warlords does use the paddle. Yes. However, the game's just not as good as the arcade. If I'm going to play Warlords, I'd rather play the arcade version. And unless you got your hands on an actual Warlords cabinet that does have a paddle, which I don't know. You might have to correct me on that on this, but I don't believe that the arcade version actually has a wheel. Let me start off with just regular Atari 2600 Warlords, just real quick. So I can show you guys the difference here for those that haven't seen the original, the uh, 2600 port. Uh, but yeah, it works great with a paddle controller. It, it's definitely a good Atari game. I think they ported it well. It's not a game that is really hard to uh, replicate on the 2600. However, you know, I mean, if you want the better graphics and you know, just just the arcade version, then that's the way to go. Um, but yeah, the Atari version is fine. There's nothing wrong with the 2600 version of Warlords. Still a great game. But it, it's funny. Warlords is my favorite arcade game, but Warlords is not my favorite 2600 game. I think I would have to go with Berserk on that one, actually. Berserk or Kaboom, maybe? Which, it's unfortunate, Kaboom is not on this collection. Um, I mean, that was Activision, so that's probably why. Uh, there's no reset button on this one. Oh, there is, but it's like, it's one of those little things where you have to, like, stick a pen in there. Like a little needle. So, just gotta switch it on and off. Uh, so, yeah, it's got all these Atari games, uh, Breakout... Yeah, I would love it if uh, Kaboom was on here, but yeah, it's Activision, so that's why it's not on here. But paddle games, I would say, are some of my favorites for the 2600. Obviously, I mentioned uh, Berserk, which is not a paddle game, but uh, for the most part, I enjoy the paddle controller more than the joystick, so I like paddle games. Like, Breakout is great. Like, I could play this forever, and I, I definitely prefer Breakout as opposed to, like, Pong. I feel like most people probably do. And this controller is actually really responsive. This plug-and-play controller, it works really, really well. The screen's starting to glitch out a little bit, though. Every time it hit, the ball hits a wall or something. And it looks like it's getting worse and worse. So that's that's a little weird. Let's turn it off and turn it back on here. Alright, so, oh wow, yeah, this is getting, like, really, it's it's like when you put an NES game into the console and it's dirty or whatever, it's not connecting right, but this is just an auxiliary plug-in, so it's the battery pack in the back, so the batteries must be getting kind of loose, oh my god, look at that, that looks like garbage, so I'm gonna go ahead and 
remove the batteries. Cause I don't even know if these batteries are new. I have like mixed batteries in here, which they say you're not supposed to do that. Apparently it uh, like runs the juice in the batteries down quicker if you use, uh, or like they say it's bad for the product in general if you use different batteries, which I don't know. I've never really cared much about, about that. Like if I need a battery and it's not the same brand like if I ha if I need two batteries and I only have one and I find another battery but it's a different brand, I'm gonna use it, I don't care. I'm not gonna go out of my way to go back to the store to buy a battery that's specifically the same brand as the other one, you know? It powers on, it's a good sign. I don't see any problems with it yet. Oh my God, that fixed it. Okay, so yeah, uh, just make sure you have good batteries and you're good to go. That actually kind of freaked me out. I thought this thing was screwed and I haven't even gotten to show you Warlords yet. So let's try it out. Here is Warlords, the arcade version with a paddle controller. This is my all time favorite way to play this game is with this specific plug and play console. I will sit here for hours and play nothing but arcade Warlords with this thing. I mean, I'm not going to right now. Uh, I don't know if you guys really want to watch me do this for like two hours. You know, maybe as a live stream or something someday. That would be interesting. But for now, I'm just kind of showing you how much I love this game. And... and so far, I'm doing decent. Uh, kind of. I mean, my walls are going down pretty quick. And we still got to get Mr. Green Guy. Oh my god, I almost lost right there. So for those that don't know how this works, uh, you try to destroy their base with the fireballs. And once the base is destroyed, once the walls are destroyed, if a fireball touches your actual uh, base or whatever, your square, uh, then you're dead. And I don't know how I didn't die right there. I got super lucky. Ah! I, I think you always start, well, I think on some versions you start on the left, other times you start on the right, but I think if you're playing one player, so best thing to try to do, if you can, is try to knock out the green guy first. So if you didn't notice, I'm the blue on the bottom right, um, and you want to try to knock out that green guy, the guy on the opposite corner of you first to make it easier you don't have to but it's a lot harder to do when he's the last guy left because every time you kill someone every time somebody dies it spawns another fireball so you've got twice as you've got like three fireballs going at once um if uh it's just you two left plus sometimes the dragon will come back and just uh spit another one out I think it's at like a certain uh, score points, certain amount of score points or something or whatever. Yeah, there's another one right there. It just spawned. I think it's just timed. It's just a timed thing. So you want to knock him out as quickly as possible. And unfortunately, I didn't get him there or we got red. So now there's three fireballs and there's going to be four if we get the purple guy out. So and I'm probably going to be the next to go, actually. Unless I knock out purple right now, which I could do. Yeah. So he's always going to shoot you first. So hold it. If you hold the fire button, uh, it'll hold the fireball for you. Or you could just let it bounce off of your thing. So anyway, there you have it, though. That is the uh, paddle plug and play controller for the Atari 2600. And we also took a look at the joystick version. So these are pretty cool, I guess. Um, I just thought it would be kind of fun to test these out, uh, do a video on these uh, for the sake of wanting to do something Atari related. Since the uh, new console is coming out soon for the 2600 plus, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Again, let me know your guys' thoughts on it in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching once again, and I will see you guys on the next one.